Hello everyone and welcome to a Glassnode feature release where we're really excited to present Workbench. So Workbench is a tool that we've released to Glassnode Studio that really opens the door to a whole suite of creativity and innovation when it comes to on-chain analysis and really is there to empower our users to just find and discover new metrics and new ideas and really take their analysis to the next level. So we'll start off with a very quick overview of what Workbench is and all the features that are available. And then we'll actually jump in and build up some live charts so you can see how the tool is used in practice. So Workbench is a tool that's been really designed with flexibility and creativity in mind, really giving the analyst the ability to combine, compare and contrast different metrics all within a single chart interface. So the tool allows you to plot multiple metrics available in Glassnode Studio into a single chart. And you can also use the formula editor to create ratios or create unique metrics that combine any of the tools available in Glassnode Studio. And really it provides flexibility in which scales we're using, whether log or linear. It allows you to plot these on different axes for each individual trace. You can select and customize the different colors, whether it be for the individual metrics or for the formulas that you create yourself. And within that, you can apply all manner of moving averages and moving medians to really make sure that you're getting the insights that you're looking for. And we've also included the ability to save these chart layouts so you can come back to it for future reference and continue to track your analysis in real time. So let's jump across now to Glassnode Studio and we'll build up some of these charts using Workbench so you can see how these features work in practice. So here we are in Glassnode Studio. We're looking at our Workbench feature, which is nested between dashboards and our Trading View features. On the left hand side, we can create a new chart preset and we can also access our previously saved charts. And then we have our main viewing pane where we can add metrics and start up our analysis. So what we'll begin with is creating a simple pricing model using the realized price as our input. So we'll start with our price chart initially and we'll also use our formula bar to recreate the MVRV ratio. So by adding price, we'll change our color to a gray. We can see that we can select different resolutions depending on which data set we're looking at. In this case, we can choose anything from one month down to 10 minutes. We'll keep it on the daily time frame. We can select whether we want to apply a moving average with a simple exponential or a moving median with some pre-selected periods and also an option to select our own. We're going to change our scale to log and note how our Y axis is Y1, which will map onto the left hand side. And each time we add a new metric, in this case, we'll add our realized price. When we add a new metric, it will move onto a separate axis. So we'll see here that realized price will automatically snap to the Y2 axis, which is on the right hand side. And each odd, odd Y axis will be on the left and our even Y axis will be on the right. We can change this to Y1 and we can see that it immediately inherits and snaps onto the log axis that is defined by our Y1 axis. So realize price is now mapped onto that same axis as price and we can now see the two performing next to each other. So the realize price provides an on-chain cost basis. So we can use this to really estimate the bottom of bear markets, the floor price. And then when price falls below, we have a capitulation zone, which generally is the signifies the end of a bear market. And what we can then do is implement a formula bar. So note here that our BTC price is M1 and our realized price is M2. So if we want to construct a topping model, let's make this a red color or an orange color. We'll map this also onto Y1. And in this case, we're going to take M2 and multiply it by an arbitrary factor of 4.2 and evaluate and draw. And we can see here that we've now modified our realized price by a factor of 4.2, which provides us for a fairly crude but effective topping model for Bitcoin cycle. So we now have a top and bottom price model using only the realized price as our input. So if we now want to rename this, so we keep in mind for next time, we can call this the realized top price. And then we can hit save. And we can either save this as the currently defined uh, pricing models chart, or we can save it as a new if we wanted to take this iteration and move it into a new form of analysis. So what we can now do is implement our MVRV ratio. So we'll put in a second formula. We will call this our MVRV ratio, MVRV ratio. We'll change our color to blue. 
and we will map this onto our y4 axis, which will be on the right hand side. Actually, we can do it onto our y2 axis in this case. And what we will set, so we have our price, which is M1, and our realized price, which is M2. The MVRV ratio is defined as the ratio between our spot and our realized price. So we can take M1 divided by M2, evaluate and draw. And we've now recreated the MVRV ratio as an oscillator that measures the distance of price away from the bottom realized price. So it's showing when we have a large degree of unrealized gains to the upside or unrealized losses to the downside when it's a below a value of one. And we can use this oscillator to really identify those market tops alongside reaching our top price model. So we can hit save and then we can come back and view this chart at a later time. So here we are in our second set of analysis. And in this case, we're looking at miners. So we have price mapped onto our Y1 axis in gray, and we have hash rate mapped onto our Y2 axis in orange. So what I wanna recreate in this is a very simple example of the hash rate ribbon. So we've got our zoom set to five years, so we can see this on a linear scale. We can apply a formula, and we have price as M1 and our hash rate as M2. So in this instance, if we wanna create a moving average of our hash rate, you can see here in gray that we have SMA of M1 by seven. So that's telling us creating a simple moving average of M1 with a period of seven. So in our case, if we wanted to construct, for example, a 90 day moving average of our hash rate, we could take M2 and do SMA M2 90. We can evaluate and draw, apply this to our Y2 axis, and let's make this a blue color and give it a name hash 90 so we remember it. 90. And now we have a 90 day moving average of hash rate. And if we can then create a second formula, we can do SMA M29. This will also go onto our Y2 axis. We'll leave it as green, evaluate and draw. And this will be our hash nine. So now we've created the two upper and lower bounds of our hash rate ribbon. Let's change this green so we can see it a little bit clearer. So now we have our standard hash rate in orange, our nine day moving average of hash rate in green, and our 90 day moving average of hash rate in blue. And note that when we have negative crossovers, when the nine day falls down below the 90 day, it generally correlates to periods of minor capitulation. So we saw it in the March 2020 sell off. We saw it following the actual halving in May. We saw it in the 2018 end of the bear market. And then we saw it again in 2021 when we had the great migration as miners started moving out of China. So we can start to reconstruct and use this SMA feature and various moving averages to reconstruct some of these tools and then apply those to different models. Now, one thing to note is that for hash rate at the moment M2, this is our standard metric. Now, we note that M2 is an input to both our hash 90 and our hash nine metrics. Now, if we jump into M2, just so you can see the impact of this, and we apply, for example, a 14 day moving median, we can see that that actually translates. So that 14 day moving median is now applied in our hash 90 and in our hash nine metric. So it's actually taking M2, whatever is set on the presets of M2, and then reapplying it across the entire system. So you can either use these functions here to create nested systems, or you can actually create modified uh, metrics using our moving median, exponential moving average, or standard moving average, and then apply that across the board. So this provides a bit of flexibility and allows you to create whatever unique analysis and really delve into the data and pull out the insights that you're looking for. So just to close on some final tips to help you make the most out of Workbench. The first is that you can turn off any particular chart item using the legend. And this can really help to clean up any of the input components if you have more complex functions, or you just wanna show a particular subset of the data that you have within your chart. You can also use our information pane on the right hand side, which will show you the various functions that are available. It will show you different examples about how to construct different formulas, and also how you can nest functions inside other functions to construct more complex metrics. And lastly, you can use the share workbench function, which will create a unique URL to your chart, and you can then share it in your various newsletters or social media to allow others to interact with your particular insight.